Hey guys, it's back with John the Tech Review and I hope you guys are all doing well. I have been doing a few collaborations before with Rosewheel and recently with the RGB mechanical gaming keyboard and a headset, which I will leave a link around so you can take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. Rosewheel again recently reached out to me and asked me to check out the new Neon Gaming Mouse and Keyboard series. The keyboard which is the one I have here with the K51 come in either blood or white color and then you have the M55 mouse which come in blood but has RGB lighting to customize to your heart content. I got both of them in blood here as you can see and they look pretty phenomenal. So first let's take a look at the keyboard. It is touted as a hybrid mechanical membrane keyboard and what that means is that for the most part it is a membrane keyboard that mimics the mechanical tactile feel uh, with the removable keycaps so you can change them. It has 19 anti-ghost key, plenty for most gamers. It is not RGB but instead it has 8 different colors of backlit and then you can have also 8 different lighting effect. It has a very simple plastic wrist strap that straddle on the keyboard but will fall if you remove the keyboard around quickly. The cable is just a simple plastic cable, no braiding cable here. I found that the font on the keycap is pleasant to look at and the marble pattern on the faceplate gives it an illusion of a more expensive build although it does slightly attract a little bit of fingerprints. I found that the lighting are plenty bright and here are some of the various colors that you can expect from this keyboard. So I just want to quickly demo the various different lighting settings that you have here. So to change that you hold out the function key and you press uh, 1 here for example. So this is more 1 you can see here. It has a wavy pattern. You can change the direction by using the arrow left and right key here. And you can change the speed by page up and page down as you can see right here. You can slow it all the way down to off or you can go all the way up. So now same thing, F2 will give you the kind of like neon flashing you can see you can speed it up just like that you can also reverse the direction again F3 and you can see here this is the pulsating change to a different color uh, 4 you have a little wavy you can see back and forth you can change the direction of course and then 5 is uh, a color changing just change to a different color a static color as you can see and you have 6 which uh, allow you to just have this kind of droplet here as you can see in and out so here you can see it's F7 we can change the uh, brightness control here as you can see uh, so you can also edit by pressing function 7 twice we go into flashy mode and then you can change uh, which one you want so that's zone 1, zone 2 you can change different color here and you go to the next zone change to a different color next zone change to a different color so you have uh, the ability to change these various different zones when you finish this do function F7 again you're done so F8, I believe it's the reactive mode, so you can start typing here as you can see. And we can also slow it down a little bit, as you can see, all the way to off. So this is the lowest, still a little bit fast, and this is the fastest as you can see right here. And that's basically all the different uh, color mode. Another thing you can do here is actually lock up the window key by just doing function window lock. And now the window key doesn't work anymore. And it's also indicated over here in the little blue LED light over there. So as you can see, pretty interesting. I have plenty of features, but and all of this is building as there are no software. Next, let's take a listen. So I just want to give you guys a quick sound test. The microphone is about one feet up here. So just give you an idea of the sound. Microphone is about six inches away. So as you can hear, it sounds similar to a brown switch to me, but I found it responsive and have quick bounce back. I did experience missing a key here and there where I'm not pressing hard enough, but after about two days of using it, I got used to it and I have to give it a little bit more actuation force. Overall, I still prefer my mechanical switch, but for those who are looking for a quieter experience and a little bit of mechanical feel, this might be a fit. Again, there's no software or driver for this keyboard as everything is built in. One thing to keep in mind is that this keyboard do not have any built-in macro functionality. It's not something that I use, but it is something to consider if you're looking for it. Next, let's take a look at the mouse. The M55 mouse on the other hand features a A4090 optical sensor for up to 6000 dpi of sensitivity and it has a typical polling rate of up to 1000 Hz. It has 6 programmable buttons and have a non-slip surface. The headlining features of course is the RGB lighting which comes with 16.8 million color and 4 different backlit modes. Although in the software I only found 3, it was the pre mode, the neon mode and then the rest of the typical regular mode. Everything was controlled via the software which at the time of the review was in a pre-production release so something might change by the time it get released. So here as you can see is the Rosewheel M55 uh, mouse configuration. Uh, over here you have the left side here you have the uh, button configuration so you can click on these and uh, of course you can select uh, another uh, function here. So uh, the only thing you can change of course is the left click you have to select that but the other one you can change it here. Uh, and then you can look at the top view if you want to see that so you can see here this is the cycle DPI button. 
here we have a macro functionality which you can set up to record some macro you like as there's the uh, separate x and y uh, sensitivity if you want to adjust that so on the right side here you have the dpi setting and at the bottom of this unit here you have the uh, low and high function and uh, you can set that and as you can see here you can make the adjustment as needed so when you have this selected you can press the dpi button which is button number six here and then they will change to one of these uh, dpi settings which uh, you will also get by the color indication here which you can see you can change that so that gives you an idea right now. There's the lighting, you have the standard which is always on, you have the respiration which is kind of like a breathing, then you have a neon which is like a cycling. Uh, here you also have uh, mouse sensitivity, here you go, 1000 pole, and here is double click mouse speech, um, some more stuff here, scroll speech, so you can see here, pretty basic functionality stuff. Uh, when you do press the save button, it does take a little bit of time to save. Uh, I think this is because it's saving to the mouse setting. As you can see, so it takes a little bit of time, but it works fine. So my usage over the last two weeks has been a mixture of gaming, video editing, and a typical web surfing and doing work. As a hardcore Razor Dead Adder fans, I have owned three of them. I found this mount was slightly lighter and it took some time to get used to. The braided cable was a nice touch and in my time of using it, tracking was superb. But keep in mind that I mostly use this mount on this gigantic mouse pad. Also another thing I want to point out is that this is the right handed version and there is an ambidextrous version which is called the M57 also at the same launch time here but I didn't get to play with that one. Pricing wise at the time of this review, the keyboard and the mouse are both $50 each and perhaps Rose Wheel will have some special combo perhaps. So overall as a gaming combo, I found this will satisfy many users who are on a tight budget or just want to try something different from the mechanical or membrane keyboard. Although it is an interesting experience, my exposure to the blue, brown and sliding switch, I prefer the brown switch and the sliding switch overall for gaming. It will also be cool to see Rose Group in the future provide some kind of software to customize the keyboard and the mouse together as other company has done. A huge thank to Rose Group for giving me this opportunity to try this new keyboard and mouse. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you guys are interested in checking it out or picking one up. So what do you guys think? Is it something that interests you or do you still prefer a full mechanical keyboard? Let me know in the comment box down below. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so as I make many of these different type of videos on the channel that you might enjoy. Thanks and have a great week.